Hello, my friends. Today we are going to do a little background information about slope fields. Uh, slope fields are great just for understanding conceptually what's going on with differential equations. And we will graph by hand a couple of basic ones. And then when you um, when you look at these on the homework, it is a lot of matching and a little bit easier problems to graph by hand. Um, but you won't be graphing very many difficult ones. Again, the bigger idea is just the conceptual piece. So what is a slope field? Um, also called a direction field. It's a way of predicting the behavior of solutions in a differential equation. This is why this is the conceptual piece. Basically, you're looking at a family of solutions, and we talked about this the other day as being the general solution. When you do have an initial value, just like when we were solving in our notes, that gives you a particular solution. So again, it's just a graphic way of viewing our solution system. And so that's really the conceptual idea. The ones that you're gonna graph by hand here, we're gonna do a couple of examples of the basics here. And like I said, um, for the most part, then you'll go forward and you'll just be kind of matching. So let's say we wanna sketch a slope field for y prime equals 2x. Well, it is important to know that we are graphing the slopes at some different points that live between negative two and two um, on the x-axis and the y-axis. So basically, we're if we're looking at y prime, we are looking at the change in y over the change of x. It's, that's what makes it a slope field. There you go. So we are gonna choose x values between negative two and positive two. And we are figuring out what the slope looks like at each of those points. Now, um, because we're going to get a bunch of different slopes, then um, it really, we're going to draw basically line segments. There's no rhyme or reason to the length of these line segments, just long enough to get a picture. So if I have an x value of negative 2, I'm looking at the change in y or change in x. I'm looking at dy dx. So I am being told here, that dy dx is equal to two times x. So boom, that's what I'm gonna do. If I need to find dy dx, I'm gonna multiply x by two. So I'm gonna get a slope of negative four. If I multiply negative one, I'm gonna get a slope of negative two. Multiply by zero, I get zero and so on. So there you go. Um, we are given a direction that looks like a differential equation that's telling me what my slope looks like at each of those x values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at this x value of negative 2. It's along this vertical line here that I have in my graph. And I'm going to draw what appears to be a pretty steep slope of negative 4. And you know, again, there's really no rhyme or reason. I'm just doing a bunch of line segments. So negative four is pretty steep. It kind of looks like that. And then I'm going to try and do a bunch of others that look like that. And I mean, you know, I'm not good at drawing. So take that for what you will. When I get to this vertical line of x equals negative one, I saw that I got a slope of negative two. So I guess I'm going to do one that's slightly less steep. Actually, let me make it a little more. That kind of looks like negative one. So let me do like negative two. It's a little less steep, I suppose. And where x is equal to zero, I had a slope of zero. I get a horizontal line. And then I'm going to kind of have the, the positive slopes over here. So we got a positive two. And we got a pretty steep positive four. Now I really like this problem because this one is actually pretty easy to find the solution set for. If y prime, the derivative is equal to two x, I could probably pretty easily figure out that y is equal to x squared plus some c. And so that's what we're doing when we find the slope field. We're actually looking at all those x squared plus c's and the way that you can tell, let's just go with a basic x squared plus zero. I would have a graph that looks like this. So what you'll see 
It's like finding the derivative at all of the points along x squared. Oh, um, and if I have, let's say, x squared minus 1, that would look something like this. I really wish I had the ability to just move those guys up and down because that's the idea. We're just changing the C value. And so your slope field is looking at the slope at any individual point along that particular solution. But when we see them all together, we are looking at a general solution. Huh, there you go. I hope that that makes sense as a big picture idea because that's really all we're doing here. Um, so like I said, that's the general. What if we have the particular solution? Well, we would need a point. So let's say the point negative one, negative one is on the graph of y. So in other words, we know that if we evaluate y of negative one, we get negative one. Boom, all we're going to do is solve for C. So that means that my output is negative 1. And when I evaluate that negative 1 squared plus C, I'm going to figure out what I get. So I'm going to square that. And it looks like when I do that, um, oh, I got a step ahead of myself there. I wrote negative 2 because that is the answer for C. It is negative 2. So my particular solution, if this is my initial value problem, remember those IVPs we talked about, is that Y is equal to X squared minus 2 as my solution, my particular solution for this differential equation. Okay, my slope field gives me my bigger picture general solution, and I can look at it for this whole family of functions where I don't know the C value. Um, but I could look specifically at x squared minus 2 and graph it just like we did the others up there. All right. In fact, if you really, if you want me to, if you're going to twist my arm here, I will throw another graph in here for you. Something like that. Okay, so that's the idea. That's really the idea. If you get it, then you can stop the video here. If you just want to see one more example, I'll give you another example. Here we go. Sketch a slope field for dy dx equals 1 over x in the square between negative 2 and positive 2, just like the last one. So again, I'm going to pick x values between negative 2 and positive 2. Uh, dy dx, I'm given the instruction here that dy dx is equal to 1 divided by x. So if I need to divide 1 by x, I'm going to do it. Negative 1 half negative one, uh, one divided by zero is undefined. All right, or does not exist, whatever you prefer. And then we get one and then we get positive one half. All right, so I am getting, um, you know, really uh, not so steep negative slopes here where X is equal to negative two. They look kind of like that. A little more steep when we get to x equals negative 1. Undefined around x equals 0, so nothing there. And then we're going to kind of see the mirror image like we did on the last one. Boom, boom. And a little less slope here. Okay. Now, if we want to be really careful here, and we want to, you know, make sure that this accurately represents the family of solutions, we can easily find the solution for this y prime equals 1 over x. We just integrate it and we get y is equal to the natural log of x, but we should specify that we are taking the absolute value of x. This came up in one of the problems we worked through in our notes the other day, that we do that absolute value around it because we can't take the natural log of negative numbers. So in fact, if you were to plug this in, you probably would see those but in your slope field, but they wouldn't work. They don't necessarily work um, in graphically. Now, if we were to specify absolute value there, then sure, it would make it positive and, you know, we could probably bring it back. So that's the basic idea. Again, you're mainly going to be focused on graphing by hand simple ones and then where necessary, just matching. And hopefully this helped you identify ones that you need to match. Good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.